Norway, known for its endless daylight during summer, is brimming with mountains, glaciers, fjords, and electric cars, plenty of them. The Scandinavian nation leads the world in electric vehicle EV adoption, with over 82% of new car sales being electric last year, a number that rises to over 90% when plug-in hybrids are included. The target is for all new cars by 2025 to be zero-emission vehicles, a goal that seems within reach. In contrast, only a meager 7.6% of new car sales in the US were electric in 2023, up from 5.9% in 2022. In China, the world's largest auto market, 24% of new car sales in 2023 were EVs. Oslo, Norway's capital, is also transitioning its ferries, buses, semi-trucks, and even construction equipment to electric power. By the end of this year, all public transportation within the city will be zero emission. Gas pumps and parking meters are giving way to charging stations, painting a picture of an electric-powered utopia. So, how has Norway's power grid coped with the surge in EVs? The answer lies largely in hydropower, which accounts for close to 100% of the country's energy production. The affordability and sustainability of hydropower have made electric cars approximately one-third the cost of gasoline-powered vehicles. However, the rapid expansion of EVs has not been without its challenges, notably an increase in overall car ownership prompting a rethink of the pace and scale of the transition. Norway's success in EV adoption stems from a combination of policy measures dating back two decades. Initiatives like zero registration tax and notably zero value-added tax for EVs have played a pivotal role. Despite early challenges, Norway's commitment to green mobility has paved the way for its status as a global leader in electric transportation. But the turning point came with the entry of Tesla and other manufacturers into the Norwegian EV market. Over the past decade, we've witnessed a significant surge. Presently, 8 out of every 10 new cars are zero-emission vehicles, with the remaining 20% comprising plug-in hybrids and a handful of petrol cars. When considering a new car purchase in Norway, hefty taxes apply to polluting vehicles, while zero-emission cars enjoy exemptions, making EVs either cheaper or comparable in price to their fossil fuel counterparts. Additional incentives, such as toll road discounts, free parking in certain cities, and access to bus lanes, further sweeten the deal for EV drivers. Peter Honland, Assistant Secretary General of the Norwegian EV Association, which was established in 1995 to assist consumers during the transition, highlights the organization's growth to over 50 employees and the provision of a call center for new EV owners. The process of availing subsidies is straightforward, requiring no additional paperwork. Buyers simply pay a reduced price for their electric vehicle. The overarching aim is to make EVs not only easier but also more economical to choose. As for adverse effects, Sirstad acknowledges the success of reshaping consumer preferences and market dynamics. However, he notes a shift towards individual EV usage over public transport, prompting adjustments in public transportation pricing to remain competitive. Funding for these incentives primarily comes from the state budget, with an annual expenditure of approximately $4 billion. While Norway's wealth, largely derived from its oil and gas industry, plays a role in financing these initiatives. The nation remains committed to reducing emissions, aiming for a 55% reduction by 2030. This commitment includes plans for expanding wind energy production on the continental shelf, aligning with the broader goal of transitioning to cleaner energy sources. Despite ongoing discussions about the future of the oil industry, Norway's EV adoption rate continues to rise signaling potential challenges ahead for traditional fossil fuel-based sectors. Norway leveraged its oil wealth by investing in the world's largest fund, Norge's Bank Investment Management, which holds stakes in 2% of global companies. This strategic approach reflects Norway's penchant for long-term thinking. Berger Steen, CEO of Frere, a battery company contributing to the country's energy transition, 
underscores the construction of the Giga Arctic factory and a battery facility in Georgia. Initially, the batteries will be used in solar and wind power plants. Steen acknowledges the United States' leadership in stimulating markets for long-term growth through initiatives like the Inflation Reduction Act IRA. While environmental concerns play a role in EV purchases, economic factors remain paramount for Norwegians. Looking ahead, the focus is on phasing out plug-in hybrids, with the government removing benefits to align them with conventional petrol cars and the tax system. Regarding charging infrastructure, early subsidies facilitated its development, although current subsidies primarily target rural areas. Mare Norway, a prominent fast charging company, has installed over 35,000 fast chargers across Europe, complementing Tesla's pioneering supercharger network. Collaborations with companies like McDonald's and IKEA have expanded charging options, creating new revenue streams for retailers. Recharge, another major charging company, operates over 2,600 charge points in Norway. While profitable sustainability remains the goal, investment in infrastructure is capital-intensive. The evolution of EVs and charging infrastructure in Norway suggests a symbiotic relationship, with initial EV adoption driving the expansion of charging facilities. Despite challenges, such as charging access for apartment dwellers, Norway continues to lead in EV adoption and infrastructure development. In fact, this structure was constructed back in 2017 as a bomb shelter from the Cold War era of the 1950s. We've repurposed it since then, and now it exclusively accommodates electric vehicles, EVs. I believe it was among the pioneering parking garages in Europe designated solely for EVs. Inside, you'll find space for up to 86 cars, all capable of charging simultaneously. Stu Portvik has overseen Oslo's electromobility division since 2014, leading the city's charge in EV infrastructure development. Oslo has emerged as a frontrunner in Europe for EV initiatives, experimenting with innovations like parking spots equipped with charging capabilities. The city has transitioned its entire fleet of buses to electric power, while also spearheading efforts to electrify construction machinery, semi-trucks, and installing over 2,000 public charging points. Funding for these initiatives primarily came from the city's coffers during the initial phases when charging services were offered for free. However, as the system matured, users now contribute through modest fees, gradually shifting the burden away from taxpayers. Oslo has gone further by electrifying its ferry fleet, making it the first European city with entirely zero-emission public transportation. The charging infrastructure for these ferries Boasting a charging rate of 3.5 megawatts represents a significant technological achievement. Installing such massive charging stations at the docks posed considerable challenges, requiring extensive retrofitting of existing facilities and substantial investments in battery systems and electronics. Nevertheless, the use of hydropower ensures that the operational costs remain low, making it a sound long-term investment for public transportation companies. Norway's reliance on hydropower dates back roughly 120 years, providing a reliable and renewable energy source that complements more variable sources like wind and solar. Plans to double wind capacity by 2040 reflect Norway's commitment to sustainable energy development, albeit with challenges like grid capacity constraints. Navigating utility company agreements and securing necessary approvals are essential steps in establishing new charging sites. As demand for electricity surges, grid companies are collaborating to find solutions, although grid expansion efforts face obstacles due to infrastructure limitations. Gas stations, rebranded as energy stations, are now entering the EV charging market, recognizing the benefits of diversifying their offerings. Commercial interests, such as Circle K, have invested in fast charging infrastructure, marking a shift toward a more commercially driven charging landscape. Circle K stands out as a major player in Norway's fast charging landscape, alongside being the country's largest gasoline chain. With the shift toward electric vehicles, EVs, there's a question of whether charging services can match the profitability of gasoline sales. However, 
It's not just fuel sales that drive profit for companies like Circle K. Convenience store sales, offering food and beverages, contribute significantly. This aspect becomes even more pertinent for EV owners, who spend more time at charging stations compared to traditional refueling stops. Collaborations between charging companies and traditional gas station operators, such as the partnership between Certus and Esso, exemplify efforts to diversify revenue streams amid declining fuel demand. As EV adoption grows, charging reliability becomes paramount. Early concerns, like charging queue and malfunctioning chargers, have diminished with market maturation. However, challenges persist, particularly regarding payment systems, which can vary across different charging networks, causing confusion among users. Improving charging infrastructure accessibility and usability is a priority for Norway, with efforts underway to streamline payment processes and ensure compatibility with international standards. Despite initial hurdles, once charging is initiated, the speed and efficiency of modern DC fast chargers are impressive. However, infrastructure expansion must keep pace with EV adoption to address concerns like range anxiety, especially in rural areas. Winter conditions present unique challenges for EVs, such as reduced battery efficiency and shorter driving ranges. Yet, advancements in battery technology, preheating features, and expanding charging networks mitigate these concerns. The resilience of EVs in winter conditions, coupled with Norway's robust charging infrastructure, bolsters confidence among drivers. As Norway nears its 100% EV adoption goal, discussions revolve around recalibrating incentives and subsidies to reflect the evolving market dynamics. With the transition to electric mobility becoming the new norm, adjustments to incentives and taxation are inevitable. Additionally, initiatives for battery recycling and prolonging EV lifespan underscore Norway's commitment to sustainable transportation solutions. Addressing concerns about the environmental impact of electric cars compared to traditional gasoline vehicles is crucial in navigating the transition to electric mobility. It's essential not to rush this transition excessively, considering the potential environmental ramifications. Striking a balance between promoting electric vehicle adoption and ensuring responsible consumption is key. We need to encourage the optimal usage of existing vehicles throughout their lifespan and remain mindful of the environmental footprint associated with car production. Despite Norway's progress in EV adoption, skepticism persists, both domestically and internationally. Common misconceptions surrounding EVs, such as concerns about fire hazards, sourcing energy, and production emissions continue to fuel debates. However, incidents like car fires have been rare, and when they occur, EVs demonstrate different safety characteristics compared to gasoline vehicles, highlighting the need for accurate information dissemination. Drawing comparisons between Norway and the United States reveals stark differences in geographical size and population, affecting infrastructure development and market dynamics. While Norway has made significant strides in charging infrastructure, challenges persist, particularly in standardizing charging protocols and streamlining user experiences. Implementing effective regulations to ensure reliability and interoperability in charging networks is essential for fostering widespread EV adoption. Lessons from Norway's experience can inform EV adoption strategies globally. Prioritizing economic incentives, electrifying various modes of transportation beyond passenger cars, and addressing infrastructure gaps are critical steps. Despite inevitable challenges and occasional setbacks, embracing innovation and adopting a flexible, iterative approach are key to navigating the transition to electric mobility successfully. Dispelling misconceptions about EVs is essential for promoting informed decision-making. Contrary to popular belief, the majority of EV charging occurs at home, reducing reliance on public charging infrastructure. Understanding this shift in charging behavior is fundamental to reshaping perceptions of electric mobility and promoting its widespread acceptance.